Good morning and welcome back to Santa Point 7. If you missed out on our hot couch talk, you really missed out on some juicy things that's been happening. Nothing new under the sun when it comes to Belize. Or my saying that Belize is not a real place at times. So we are moving into our first segment. And of course, we have the man of the hour, the man with the biggest portfolio. And he brought it for us, actually. <laughs> not really. He brought a book that very similar to it. We have Honorable Kevin Bernard here, Minister of Health and Wellness. And we're going to be discussing, you know, the fact that you really got some really big shoulders to fill now right now, some heavy lifting and a lot of... Did he get sleep? I just want to check if you did get sleep. Yes, I am. Yes, You're I am. good. Are yes, you good? I would hope so. He's the Ministry of, Minister of Wellness. <laughs> yes, but you know, you know how this ministry comes with a lot of heat. And yes. I'm definitely sure that you know, you know what you're going into. Of course, you've mentioned you've had friends that are doctors. And yes, you yes. are definitely going to look into talking to your advisors, seeing where you can steer this ship that we hope doesn't sink in any kind of way, shape or form. Well, well, thank you and good morning. Good morning. Yes, morning, morning. And thank you again for being on the couch with us this morning. That's not a problem. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. Uh, it's been an early morning again. I mean, I was up early yesterday, had a late night meeting with the COVID response team. Um, so when I reached our New York, it was almost after 10. So, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, I just want to say, so I figured that, you know, right now you're just getting into yes, a lot of meetings and That's like. Right. A lot of, I would a lot of discussions say, exactly, and conversations, trying, which is very healthy to definitely. have because you want to be able to talk to everybody and have those consultations in the beginning That's so right. we can see, you know, where do we leave off, where do we need to go, and definitely, like you definitely. said, your, your, your peripheral is going towards seeing what the people are saying, which That's is important. Right. Yes, critically, you must, it is, it is of utmost importance to listen. Yeah. And to heed to a good advice, and uh, that's what I'm depending on. Good advice. Most definitely. Right. Minister, in that regard, as you know, this has not been a new issue. It's been something that has been floating around where there's been new posts created, all kind of things happening when it comes to the addressing of Dr. Montenero and um, the removal of him. Well, not really removal, but the, the new position that kind of made him, what's the word we, we, we say? Redundant. Redundant, yes. And so, will you be addressing this issue moving forward? Would you be bringing him back? What are your thoughts in regards to his placement when it comes to the ministry? Well, well let, me, let, me, let me point this clear. I, you know, um, we can't undo what has been done in terms of the act, yeah. the amendment, and in, in its own wisdom, uh, the former minister and his team at the time felt they needed to do so in strengthening um, the, the, the Ministry of Health. I can tell you uh, that there are other recommendations in terms of uh, when you look at the overall health, health, uh, Ministry of Health and the strengthening of the Ministry of Health, a lot of understaffed, under-resourced, human resource, and so a lot of capacity building that has to take place. Now, the, the, the center and the focus of attention um, has been on Dr. Marvin Manzanero because of all the shift and all that, but I think we need to also look at the other side of the coin in the sense that it's really to try and uh, make uh, the, 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 the ministry more responsive at the same time, addressing the, the urgent needs uh, of, of, of the ministry. And that's one I think reason I, I understand that these posts were created. That aside though, um, I feel that um, Dr. Marvin Manzanero, and I, I, like I said, I, it's the first time I met Dr. Marvin Manzanero was yesterday. I've seen him, on, and I think I talked to him over the phone when I was mayor, when the, when the um, COVID just hit and so forth. Those are, those are the only discussion I had. But I, I did speak to Dr. Marvin Manzanero yesterday. I mean, I had a very uh, frank discussion with Dr. Marvin Manzanero. I asked what is his background and, you know, get a real feel of what the doctor um, but just like, just like Dr. Man, Marvin Manzarero, I've spoken with many other doctors yeah. um, because I had, as you know, I got into this thing and you have to hit the ground running. Yeah, very true. I guess right. I'm, so I say I have a sprint. Well, you know, so, uh, <laughs> hit the ground running. Yeah, easy. but but for me, um, I have been placed with this responsibility to lead this ministry. In anywhere I go, uh, I try to be as professional as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the approach that I am taking uh, in reaching out uh, 
to both Dr. Manzanero and everybody else. I, I, I feel that we need to mend whatever fences exist. We need to look at what may have transpired, uh, what are the issues uh, for, uh, the staff faces, uh, the challenges that they have. And so I'm trying to really get a great grasp of uh, what may have occurred. I'm trying to fix it. At the same time, we have to also understand the dynamics of the Ministry of Health and, and the whole scheme of things. Because when you talk about health, it's not just the public sector, you talk about the private sector. You have, to, right. you have to know all of these things and work around these. So you need the right fit. You need the right people. Um, and I believe, personally, this is my opinion. And again, like I said, I'm consulting. I'm trying to get proper consensus of what is yeah, happening. Definitely. I've had a great discussion with Dr. Manzera. I feel that Dr. Manzera, uh, as well as many of the doctors in the ministry, has contributed a whole lot uh, to the health sector in Belize. Um, and I still feel that he can contribute um, under this ministry. Um, I am very optimistic that and hopeful that we can find an amicable solution, uh, one that will reduce the bloodletting that would have or have been perceived as bloodletting. Mm -hmm. um, because to give credit, like I said, I think we have to really look at the whole situation. Yeah. Um, and so it is, of, it is in my opinion that we reach out to Dr. Marvin Manzanero. I, I feel that it was critical for me uh, to do so because we want a new direction. We want to be able to show to the Belizean people that we are committed, despite who you are, what political affiliation. I don't know who Dr. Manzanero votes for. I am not, I'm not uh, focused on those issues. I think that we, right. we have to address the fight and, 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 and address the issue of this pandemic. Yeah. And not only the COVID issue, but there are many other issues affecting our health sector. Our people are dying from diabetes. Our people are, there's a many those suffering from cancer, you know, hypertension, and all of these issues that has to be addressed. And so we need uh, to, to remain focused as a ministry. And as a leader now in this ministry, that's the direction I'm taking. Um, and in building the necessary team and putting the necessary people in place is what will make this a success. Mr. And, Bernard, you're talking about the... the, the development or the not the development but the filling in of spots making your ministry yes. robust in a way right um let's I, I want to talk about your choice of the, the new ceo dr julio sabido um, he's a junior medical officer who hasn't held a post in any supervisory or administrative capacity as yet um, he has not even been running a region as yet what can you tell us more about your choice in that and how do you feel like he could run the entire ministry there like in everything, you have to give uh, the opportunity to people that you believe will be able to work along with you in the vision that you want to carry out. And, and, and I'm not sure whether you can, we, we, sh we should be able to say whether he's a junior or a senior. He's a medical officer. He has worked in the Ministry of Health for 10 years. He knows the wrongabouts of the ministry. Um, and. I feel at the time that op options were done. I mean, you know that uh, they, 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 we had uh, CO Daisy that was working there under the previous minister. Um, Dr. Les Bergera was, 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 was offered the position uh, at some point. That I don't know what transpired, how that did not work out. And so I had to hit this ground running. Yeah. I need somebody that is already there, a technical person that knows the, the ins and outs of the ministry. And that is prepared to work with me. And so I, I said, well, let's, I, I'm going to go with Dr. Sabido. And, and we're, going to, we're going to ride this uh, train together and, and remain focused. But one thing I always say, and I have said this to the CEO, that we must, learn, we must also bring respect to the ministry. And this is my mantra. We will respect the technical people. We will respect the staff that works at the ministry. And likewise, we will expect the same. Um, and I think once you build that and you set that mm -hmm. base there, we can make a lot of great things 
happen in the this ministry. I am very much optimistic that that will happen. And so it was based on that premise that that uh, Sabido is my CEO. And I and I like I said, I believe it's, it's ten years of service in, in in the Ministry of Health, and we must give people an opportunity to prove themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely. Somebody could tell me. I mean, as I have seen, but Minister Bernard, I know a minister. I know a doctor. So how come he will be the Minister of Health? Like if like in everything. Necessarily has to be so. Um, it is through your experience, your administrative abilities, and, and one of the things I, I want to say that while Dr. Sabido is a, comes from a technical background in terms of the ministry, his capacity now is one of an administrative role. So you have to separate the functions, and yeah. so we will rely wholly on these senior technical people that will lead those units okay. to give us guidance so that we can make the right decisions. And that is what is critical, because we can't go and dictate to the head of the AP unit, to the head of uh, planning, uh, and, and, and so forth, to, to Dr. Bear and say, well, I want you to do this instead of that, when they are the one that, are, that knows the detail of their job functions and what needs to be done right. to improve the health system in Belize. So I am going to rely heavily on those individuals. And of course, I have, like I said, a team of medical advisors outside of the public health system, who have worked, of course, in the public health system for many years, but can provide also some guidance and, judge, and, and advice to me as we move this ministry forward. I have to say, that's one thing I really appreciate about what you minister, saying that you know that you don't necessarily have that level of experience with like, the medical health aspect, but you will rely on people and consultation, Definitely. which is something I think everyone will be looking forward to seeing you know, how that transpires That's moving right. forward. I want to ask, in the same regards, into CEO um, Sabido, when it comes to his role as the chair for the tender community, do you know who, um, committee, sorry, do you know who will be taking that place? Have you decided already who's going to be filling his capacity I am, I am um, at this point, reviewing all these processes, I, I, I should tell you, um, and I am yet to make a decision uh, in terms of what we're going to do. Whether there will, there will be changes, yes, there will be changes. I will say that publicly. Um, we have to strengthen what exists, and we have to make sure that there is no, no one to, to think that there is a conflict of interest of any, or any sort. Yeah. Um, I want to ensure that we run a tight ship at the Ministry of Health. I want to ensure that there is transparency and there is openness. And, uh, and so, I am going to be looking at all those uh, necessary key positions. And so it's not just about filling the director of hospital services and right. the director of public health, but also looking at our chief pharmacist or, 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 or director of labs. So all of these things are critical areas that needs to be looked at and put on filled and so forth. Of course, going through the necessary processes that the public service requires. Now, yesterday, yesterday on the show, well, Jules, Jules called out Dr. Salido to actually release receipts for the fora uh, antigen tests that were, that were sponsored by the Taiwanese government. And um, it was one year ago, and the, apparently the information officer did contact them by 10 o'clock with proof yeah. uh, that these tests has been, that have been sent out to clinics, but that was just done this month after being held for a year. Um, in the interim, they were reliably informed that the ministry continued to use the urgent procurement uh, limited tendering process to acquire tests, which cost taxpayers because only a single source tenders. Because, yeah, they're only a single source tenders, and that is why the Thai Taiwanese tests were kept locked away. Um, until now, when they finally ran out of these tests, what would you comment on this? But well, let me give you a little background. I think sometimes we need to clarify certain things. I okay. Immediately, of course, I listen to the show. Uh -huh. um, but I also ask questions in terms of what do we have, what are the processes, what is yes. going on, because <laughs> got to get everything going. Um, but yes, um, these um, antigen tests was received as a donation. I think about 12,000 of them were received um, in January of 2021 by the Taiwanese government. At the time, of course, and, and remember now, you have, to, you have to be able to plan. And so, it, Belize was in, in that, that wave around that time, um, and we had enough SD biosensor to go during that period. Um, when we ran out of the SD biosensor, uh, and, and then let me just also say, though, that 
these test kits or antigen test kits were not was was, was not um, tested or how you call it the verification had to be done and and so but the lab the people at the lab they were very much when I mean, you had the, 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 the huge spike in cases yeah. mm -hmm. they are overwhelmed they're understaffed and so you can we couldn't expect at the time that they would have been doing verification conducting PCR tests at the same time and and you know the, the, the struggles were there we we, we were we were in the first one of the major waves of, of, of this pandemic. Right. Yeah. And so there was a lot going on uh, happening. So they, they utilized the SD biosensor. It was when the SD biosensor um, uh, supplies was ended, um, they put out an open tender. So there's, there was no such emergency process that was used. An open tender was done from all indication that I have. Um, it went through the necessary processes, through the Ministry of Finance, uh, and went back to the contractor general. The contractor general had some questions and concerns, and that was all shared back and forth. And then the, finally, the contractor general gave its approval, okay. and the contract was signed to acquire um, some immediate, um, some, some of these tests. Now, re bear in mind that I think there's a, that's a total of about 75,000 um, of these tests that has to be acquired on two, the process, the, the contract. We have received, I think, 15,000 of them, and the balance being received today. The 12,000 that you, that you are talking about from the Taiwan, that was end up using, again, we, they had to, the, the um, verification process was done in October. Uh, and again, all of the processes. So when they used, they started using that, te that test in January, it used up in one, 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 one month, because so it's 12,000, you see the demand a daily test that is being conducted. That, right. It doesn't last long. So, uh, the uptake of these tests is, 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 is huge. So, but Minister, it's just that, to clarify. In that, that regard... It was not that the, it was purposely locked up. It was the fact that we had a lot of SD biosensor test kits that they were being used. And, and nothing to say that you cannot uh, store your tests. Um, these are held in storage until when they are able to be used. They don't have like an expiration date yes. along that line? I, I think there are some tests that has a longer life depending on where they are supplied from. Uh, okay. So, because yeah, I think there's, they actually had, we had some comments too, because we've been asking also from you know yeah. the public for what they were thinking presently right now, and someone sent in about worrying about the expiration date for these tests. You know, are we using bad tests? That kind of idea. Of, you know, are we checking these things before? No, I think we're it's, these are all valid. Um, valid. I think the only delay was the fact that they had they had to get through the verification process, and and uh, that has been done, and so now they they ended up using those in one month, and and that is done. And so, Minister, I want to address now, because we have a heavy ministry right now with this, and yes. there's definitely a lot of finances that need to go into it. But it's been reported that, you know, these, this ministry is, you know, losing in finances because there's so many things that you guys have to do, have to maintain when it comes to tests, it would overall just obtain upkeeping in the ministry. And so, will you be asking for a supplementary going for into cabinet about $16 million? Could you comment on that idea of... Um, requesting for more monies to help support the ministry? Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say that when the initial budget was prepared in the, pre, in the early part of the year, a lot of cuts had to be made yeah. across ministries. And the Ministry of Health was also one of them that had to be, had to be cut. I will use a, a simple example in terms of the uh, materials and supplies uh, that was Budgeted, I think, about 10 million. Um, but there was a lot of, there were about five point something million of pending contractual agreement arrangements that from the previous administration. So you already uh, cut short another. You just master like you don't. Right. They don't uh -huh. right yeah, you don't, don't take basically. Don't right, you you money. So mm -hmm. by the time you the the, the 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 tender went out for new contracts and all that, you fall short. Okay. Right. You fall short. The rise in cases, the spike in cases, more people have to be assisted with uh, uh, the pantry program, so COVID response. Then we had to bring in the COVID enforcement unit. You had to do, there are several things that contribute to, to the need for us to have to go back now and say we have to take a supplementary, we'll have to make a request for a supplementary uh, to meet contractual obligations. Yeah. Uh, we need these medications, uh, as you are aware. Um, they have been a short, short fall of medication in some of the, in, in the hospitals and where hopefully we'll be able to start to see these things coming in over the next week to the next month. 
uh, hopefully by the end of uh, February should have received all 10 container for the food container loads of medication to be able to supply uh, the shortages that we have, we have seen and the necessary need. Um, so yes, uh, I, I won't, I won't um, deny the fact that there is a need for us to go to, um, to the house uh, for a supplementary. Now, uh, that has yet to be finalized with the Ministry of Finance. How much are we going to be able to, to access in terms of, I mean, like, it's like everything. A budget is a wish list. You, this is what right. you need. This is how you want it. Um, I, could, I could tell you when the COVID budget was prepared, the initial budget in 2021, 21, 22, for COVID, the COVID yeah. line item budget, where a lot of the things are used out, uh, that are paid from that to, to whatever COVID-related matters. Um, the overall budget that was prepared was about 21 million. It was only approved in the House for 15 million. So you see already where the uh, yeah. cuts, you, you, yeah, the cuts right. uh, were there. So um, it's a very dynamic ministry. And as things, if things can happen, we have Omnicron raging upon us. Um, so there's, you have to always shift focus uh, at, at, at based on the situation at hand. Uh, and so definitely uh, we're hoping um, that we will be able to get the approval to buy the house whenever, uh, if we have to take that supplementary, to at least be able to cover up um, for those remaining um, um, obligations that are there um, by the ministry. And it needs, because again, we, it's things that were necessary. We can't do without medication. And we can't do without medication. These are, uh, it's the health and, uh, of our nation, so we, it's, these are critical things. Minister, in that regard, being that the budget you said was cut, uh, there's rumors going around that some of these suppliers have not been paid. Medical suppliers have not been paid. Is this true, or what, what, what is your comment on that? Well, as I mentioned, what was budgeted initially, I was already cut short because of previous right. contractual arrangements. Right. And so, yes, there may be some suppliers that have been supplying and, and some payments are pending. So this is where we are trying to get the supplementary as well to meet those obligations, okay. uh, those contractual obligations, uh, and, and, and to ensure that we, 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 we move from here forward to the right, in the, in the right uh, budgetary, proce budgetary process that has to take place. Okay. Now, whatever budget we prepare uh, for this new fiscal year coming up, Again, it's, we have to look at the stringent measures we are facing in this country. Right. Um, I mean, while we've seen some, some major improvements in the economy, we're still not out the woods yet. And so we have to also keep that tight ship together as a, as a government. And every ministry has to bear some of that burden, and including the Ministry of Health um, that I know. But it is too sustainable um, and financial sustainable decision that we have to make. In order to move our ministry, oh, we have some. I guess somebody said, squeeze the little you know, whatever you got out of what you have, you know. So, um, you know, it's just being prudent in many of the decisions we have to make. Speaking of um, the idea of being prudent and just, you know, squeezing here and there, putting here and here, yeah. um, when we think about um, Dr. Russell Manzanero, now, because I know people get it mixed up sometimes. Yeah, you hear yeah, yeah. Names, like, huh? yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, he, we will be bringing him back. We, you mentioned before um, he'll be coming um, to the Central Health Region. Could you explain a little bit why to that specific location, as well as was there anything in the idea of why he was sent away for us in the first place? I have no idea uh, uh, where Dr. Russell was, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we have brought him back to the headquarters at the EPI unit. That is where he is. Right. Um, we feel that um, we, need, we needed to, to put an epidemiologist there uh, to be able to guide and, and, and shift, uh, move the focus in where we need to, to address. Again, like I said, uh, the numbers tell you everything. And so these people have to be there looking at the statistics, looking at the numbers, making the analysis and making the right decisions that we need to address. COVID is just one factor. Yeah. There's many other issues. And so they, these are the key functions. Uh, and I want to give, though, and a shout out and credit to Ms. Myra Fernandez, who is the surveillance officer, but was also holding over that unit all along uh, yeah. while there was no epidemiologist there. Because there is, um, I think Dr. Antonio, uh, Ms. Antonio, I don't know if he's a doctor, to be honest with you. Uh, but he's out of the country on study leave, and unpaid study leave, by the way. He's covering his own expenses, um, but still providing support to the EPI unit um, from outside. And so, but you need somebody here on the ground that is, yeah. that is able to 
go and do the field work too, right. and making that sure that they're understanding what is happening. So it was a critical uh, thing decision that we had to make immediately. And so I said, well, let's bring in, um, let's bring him back up to the to the headquarters to be able to to, to work in that unit to assist us um, to be able to address those situations. I feel like is that sufficient? <laughs> it may not be sufficient uh -huh. because, um, as you know, the task of the ministry is huge. And uh, but we had to do that for now. Uh, and of course, starting to look at the other positions as well that we need to we need to also fill. Right. Uh -huh. So identifying candidates, great candidates, talking to people, um, looking at uh, uh, different options that we have in terms of trying to fill those posts. Yeah, most definitely. I think when it comes to bringing back people, looking at their capacity and seeing where they can really place is super important. I know right now, presently, when you entered into the ministry, there's a lot of empty. There were vacancies. Yeah, yeah. So vacancies, now you right. have that, you know, heavy burden of thinking, okay, who to put where, why, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And so definitely relying on the consultations would be important because why would we have, you know, well, epidemiologists? Epidemiologist. Yes, I know the word. so hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, catch me more, more than a lot of times. Yes, you know, so you know, I struggle with their yeah. words, but <laughs> to think, you know, he's not there where he's supposed to be and we have to be relying on other people, you know, why not put him there where he can do the best work yes. possible? So definitely some kinks to look into when it comes And one of the things, though, I, I, and I've said this, and I have not spoken to Dr. Russell Manzanero. I mean, um, yesterday um, I, I had a meeting with the other Manzanero and Anna. And, uh, Prior, and then Dr. Zuniga, who heads the planning and uh, the other unit. And so I had to come down to the city to meet with the COVID team. And, and I had other meetings. I visited the KHMH, you know. Uh, the all over the place. Yes. So, so, um, <laughs> well, he has a huge So yeah, I do I intend to meet with uh, Dr. Russell um, and the units. I, and in fact, I told myself and the CEO will be doing uh, unit by unit discussion in okay. terms of what, has, what is my, my, my vision in terms of. Uh, moving uh, the ministry forward and what I expect of them. Right. Um, what I want is the people to deliver and to work and yeah. to, to commit themselves that we are going to get this thing together, done together. Um, you know, and so that's that's the direction of leadership that I am trying to portray at the ministry and, 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 and to bring across that I'm here to work with each and every one of them, and despite what or who, happened or before whatever, or whatever may happen. Before. Turn the page. Let us move forward. Let us bring about better, equal health for all the regions. That's, that's beautiful, Minister Bernard. How has your transition been so far with the transition team and everything like it that? Has, been, it has been, been going well. Just a week, no? Yeah, just a week, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been going well. And I, I will say this, that, um, you know, when, when, when uh, the announcement was made and I, I met with uh, the former minister, both me and him um, had a wonderful discussion. Um, you know, and like, again, I think that Dr. Minister Shabbat uh, did a, a wonderful job too. Um, I mean, there have been, there may have been challenges. Like in every ministry, there are challenges, um, and it, the Prime Minister felt that you know they need to have we need to have a new change and a new look in terms of the ministry, and, and that's in the purview of the right of the Prime Minister. And I'm humbled by that. Uh, but like I said, myself and Minister Shabbat, we spoke uh, at length. He explained to me on many of the challenges that he may have had to. Uh, and the need for us to fill these positions, and you know, you know what, the ministry need to get these things together. Some of the bureaucracy that happens sometimes, public service sometimes can be very, very frustrating. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, and so we have to also look at these things from a from a government perspective. The public service needs to start to do a little bit more to make things more efficient. Uh, you know, and that's why when I when when I had the responsibility for e-governance, I stressed. Uh, on it the last time when we did the digital agenda. And I think the Ministry of Health is going to be one of the biggest uh, ministries as well that can benefit from digital transformation. Yes. There's a lot of need for us to make things more seamless, but at the same time making it more efficient so that right. it trickles down to better and improve services to our, to our citizens. So for me, um, it is important that that we, 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 we keep that in mind and that focus in mind that we are here to serve the residents of this country. We are here to provide a service to the people, uh, but not just service, quality service, best and improved service, because that's what people want. They, they want when they go to a community health center, they could get one of the 
they go get a basic medication. Yeah. They want when they go to KHMH or the, uh, the Northern Regional Hospital, they are properly treated at the same time. So you have to look at all angles. I said, you know, as I, and I said that one of my talk show yesterday. You lead not only from top bottom, you need to lead from bottom. Well, that's fine. Because you're happening there. Right. Uh -huh. Exactly. Right. Minister, as we're winding down this segment, I really want to ask for your comments on one final thing. Um, I believe it was last week or the week before. January feels too, super long Three now months. when I'm thinking about yep. it. Um, um, the mayor um, mentioned about the homeless situation and stated that... What's that? The mayor, Mayor um, oh, Wagner. Oh, Wagner. Well, yeah. Mayor Wagner, yes. There's too much Kevins. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Kevins <laughs> in Belize, I'm realizing it. But Mayor Wagner um, mentioned about the fact that the homeless situation, and he mentioned first that it is a health issue. And so what are your thoughts in regards to the homeless people? Uh, you know, they're running around for, I know you have COVID on your back right now trying to figure that out, but then there are things that also carry on. There are other sicknesses that carry on. There are other issues when it pertains to health that carry on. So in your thoughts, what do you think will be happening when it comes to the homeless situation and addressing the issue to be able to help these people provide a facility or just provide services when it comes to addressing their needs? Well, I have not been able to visit the Palm View um, mental health facility that they have in Belmopan. Uh, but I think it's also a critical thing that we have to seriously look at. Um, I can tell you when I come to Belize City sometimes on the weekend uh, with my wife, my wife would always ask me, say, you know, when, uh, why is it that we continue to see people on the street without, I mean, sleeping on the sidewalk? I said to her, you know, it exists all over the world. Big America, when I visited the U.S., I remember when I went there on a leadership program, I was taken aback. The number of homeless people you see there. But we have to do something about that in Belize, too. Um, and I think it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of concern to, to me. Um, and it's something that when I, when I do meet, meet with the team, because like I said, I'm meeting with every unit, every head of uh, section, and, and, and to make sure that I get an understanding what was in place, what is in, being done, uh, and in this case, we have to really find out what is being done on the mental health side uh, for people, uh, homeless people, um, how are we addressing those issues, uh, where does the family structure play in all of this as well, uh, and, 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 and what has been the, 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 the communication between yeah. right. families and the, 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 the medical uh, personnel that has to be engaged uh, in terms of addressing some of these major issues. Um, so it is one of my priorities as well. Um, to, to really look at, uh, I think it's it's important. It's an important part of our, of our health system, uh, and we have to also look at what are the causes uh, of these issues. And so, um, a lot of you might, might not talk about these things, uh, but it exists around us. Yeah, right. We have so. to we have to also educate our citizenry to not look down on these individuals but to also help to support and find ways how we can improve these issues in our country. Most definitely. Well, I really have to say thank you so much, Minister, for taking time to be here and addressing yes. all our comments, our issues, you know, wondering what's happening under the sun, because, you know, you're here, you're, it's sprint a lot away, but you'll be able to stop and take a glass of water if it's that, not away. That, that's true. <laughs> I, I, I really want to, um, I, and I really appreciate the opportunity, I really want to stress to our citizens uh, and across this country, that we must be cognizant that while we have Omicron here, yeah. there's significant evidence that Delta still exists. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, when we, the, the, as you know, in the, the Belize is one of the one of the few countries in this region that can do the, the genome testing right. um, and, and be able to, to sample the results and based on what type of variant we have. And, when they did a sample size, uh, you saw that 83%, yes, was Omicron, but another 17% of that was okay. Delta. So Delta is still here. And remember that, why, why I see this? Why I see this? Because a lot of people sometimes say, oh, I just say Omicron, you only give me an Ali chest cold, or just give me one, you know, Ali headache, and, and, and taking it for granted. We cannot take this for granted. So I'm asking and pleading to people, Let's get vaccinated. Yeah. The vaccination may not, but uh, what do I say, it doesn't stop you from not getting the Does virus. It you. But it reduces the risk of severe hospitalization sickness. and severe sickness and even death. Right. Delta 
And I want to give credit to where credit is due, our frontline workers, our people at the Ministry of Health, the doctors, our nurses, all our people that have been on the front line, working hand in hand, hard. If they and have not done the many things that has been done, a lot of people and I say, oh, we've got too much regulations and this and that. But if this was not, have not been done, there, have been, there would have been much more deaths in this country. So let us be responsible. Let us continue to wear your mask, wash your hands regularly, keep your social distance, and please, let's get vaccinated. Most definitely. Right. Thank you so much, Minister. And thank, thank you for reminding us about yes. that too as well, uh -huh. because Delta is still there wrong. Just because I'm um, come to hang out, I mean, Delta is still there in the background to play. So please, right. by all means, get vaccinated. You can always visit the Ministry of Health and Wellness Facebook page to find out the different locations that you can get vaccinated yes. at. Talk to a medical professional in case you have any questions. Be free, feel free to do your investigation as always, but make sure you talk and have that very healthy discourse about what are the options, what... We have so much vaccinations. Like, honestly, yes, we have sir. so much of vaccines. Like, it, we have options to go pick, choose, and refuse. So by That's all means... That's very true. We did that that We day. did that. We did that the last <laughs> time we went to go get our booster. So by all means, please protect yourself. And with that, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking about the Belize Defense anniversary and the activities under the triumph amidst all adversity. So stay tuned for that exciting conversation. We'll be right back.